بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد continue on in our study of أصول السنة by Imam Ahmed رحمه الله تعالى we reach the portion in the treaties I believe this is the 15th درس after Imam Ahmed spoke about the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in the explanation from the ulama like Sheikh uh, Abdulaziz Al-Rajhi uh, and Sheikh Ubaid Al-Jabri, Hafizahumullah Ta'ala, uh, they explained about the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we discussed uh, some of those issues, some of the high points or the main points that those ulama that they brought about from, this, uh, from the benefits of this treaties. And then... Imam Ahmed explained about the Ahl Sunnah accepts the text of the Quran and the Sunnah and they believe. They have Iman and then they believe in those Nasus and what comes in the Nasus with issues about the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and issues about the Ru'ya of seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Day of Judgment without getting into argumentation. And here's what the text of uh, Asul al-Sunnah says from Imam Ahmed Rahimahullah ta'ala qala Imam Ahmed wa mithla ahaditha ru'ya kullaha wa innat an an al-isma'i wa istaw wa istawhasha minha al-mustami' wa innama alayhi limanu biha wa ala yurudda minha harfin wahid wa ghayriha min al-ahadith al-ma'thurati an al-thiqat وألا يخاصم أحد ولا يناظره ولا يتعلم الجدال فإن الكلام في القدر والرؤية والقرآن وغيرها من السنن مقروه والمنهيه عنه لا يكون صاحبه وإن أصاب, وإن أصاب بكلامه السنة من أهل السنة حتى يدعى الجدال ويسلم this is beautiful, beautiful, uh, this text and this ibarah by Imam Ahmed, which explains for us the tariqa to salaf, the, tariqa, the minhaj of Ahl sunnah And this, for me, affirms for me, it affirms for us the minhaj of Ahl sunnah the methodology of Ahl sunnah that they accept the nusus, they believe in it, they accept it, they don't have to debate Ahl bid'ah about those very intricate and detailed uh, issues in Aqidah and so forth. But they propagate Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they stay on that minhaj with firmness. And may Allah bless us with ikhlas, with thabat. Because you often find so many people, especially when you come back and you see the West, you, you may pray in a Diobandi Masjid, you may have to. You may pray in this one. These are Ashadis. And these ones are extreme Sufis. Jamaat Tablik is here. Khana Muslimin here. That all the Masajid, you have so many different things and different people call into different things. But you have to be firm on Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Minhaj of the Salaf. Because you'll find people calling some things of the Quran and some things of the Sunnah. But leaving the Minhaj of the Salaf, even if they say it on their tongues, but their actions their menhaj, their methodology, and the way they're practicing Islam, and the way they're calling people, and what they're calling people to, goes against that. So Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, he gave another example, kullaha, meaning that, and for example, he gave the example of the ahadith, of the ru'ya, of, of, of seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. That we don't debate that. We accept those texts, and... Uh, this is a continuation of his last statement when he was discussing the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you accept the, the Qadr in all of its different degrees the, all the four uh, levels of the Qadr we mentioned that you accept it Taslim fi qalb that Allah knows everything Allah created everything Allah wrote everything and, er and everything is in accordance with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you don't have to debate the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't debate and argue with people about the Qadr Establish the hujjah if you have the ability to do so and keep going on the minhaj of the salaf of this ummah. So Imam Ahmed said, وَمِثْلَ أَحَدِيثَ الرُّؤْيَ كُلَّهَا 
accepting the ahadith of the ru'ya, of seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, all of them, accept all of those hadith, believe in them, all those hadith which are thabit, which are sound, we accept them. And if someone comes who, uh, who, who, who is listening, and here's the ahadith, and they have doubt and doubtfulness, it's upon you, Iman, all in, in, in all of it, okay? If someone brings to you the proof from Kitab wa Sunnah that the Sunnah, those ahadith are sound, then it's up to you just to have Iman in it. Don't debate it. Don't argue it. Don't fight it. Accept, accept Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and may Allah bless our hearts to be open and soft to accept Kitab wa Sunnah. And then he said, and do not... Uh, do not differ or do not uh, dispute or uh, go against even or, or not accept even one letter. He said even harf wahid. Not even one letter should you dispute with from the authentic sunnah, from the Quran and the authentic sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. that if something comes from you and it's found that's a sahih hadith, as uh, I believe it is attributed to Imam, uh, Imam Abu Hanifa, that he, or, or maybe perhaps uh, Imam Malik, that he said, hadith madhabi, that if a hadith is sound, it, it is determined that this is a sound, authentic hadith, then that's my madhab. Meaning, leave my, other, leave my statement that goes against that because I didn't know that hadith and, or I didn't believe that hadith was necessarily sound. But if it becomes affirmed that that is a sound hadith, then I, I, I leave what I was upon, my, my statement, if it disagreed with the hadith, and I go with the ahadith. That is how the salaf of this ummah was. That's, how, that's the madhab of uh, Imam Abu Hanifa. And that's the madhab of Imam Malik. And that's the madhab of Imam Shafi'i. And that's the madhab of Imam Ahmed. All those four imams and the menhaj of the salaf is that when they found something that was sound from the authentic sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, they accepted it. Taslim fi qalb. And may Allah bless us to have taslim fi qulubina. Ameen. Then the Shaykh uh, Imam Ahmed said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, well, other than that from ahadith that are uh, narrated by the thiqat, by those people who are uh, trustworthy narrators that have accuracy, that have, uh, and the synod, it, the chain of narration is not broken, and that they, uh, those narr narrations are free from, uh, uh, from, something that you know goes against the rest of the Quran and the Sunnah or something shahuth or and also that there is uh, that these ahadith they're proven to be sound then we accept that and he said and do not debate or get into controversy with anyone nor debate them and do not even learn uh, debating and argumentation for verily, speech about the Qadr, you know, uh, speaking about the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, other than what's come in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the authentic Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, about the Qadr, about the Ru'ya, about uh, seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Day of Judgment, and about the Quran, you know, for example, the new, that we hear these arguments now, uh, certain brothers that, you know, are calling to Allah, they're making da'wah to Allah, but yet they, because they're not students of knowledge, they make big mistakes about the Qur'an. Big mistakes. You know, saying things about the Qur'an, the Qur'an is not this, and it's this, and it's not the waraka that's in your hand, it's not this, it's not the, the mushaf that we have, you know, all kind of statements that are very dangerous, which shows that this individual, although they are calling to Allah, and they have a lot of experience in calling to Allah, and calling people away from kufr, which is a na'mah, a great blessing. But they're not grounded in knowledge, and they should not speak about these things. And this is what those great imams were talking about. This is what Imam Ahmed was talking about. Beautiful. Let's, let's read that again. فَإِنَّ الْكَلَامِ فِي الْقَدْرِ وَرُؤْيَةِ وَالْقُرْآنِ وَغَيْرَهَا مِنَ السُنَنِ مَكْرُوهٌ مَنْهِيهٌ Imam Ahmed Rahim Allah Ta'ala said, speaking about the Qadr, the divine decree of Allah, seeing Allah on the day of judgment, uh, and the Quran, 
you know, debating about the Quran being the speech of Allah or getting into all these debates and arguments or questioning the Quran or saying the Quran is this or saying it's not that. But other than this, from the Sunnan is something that is hated and prohibited. It's hated and it's prohibited in the religion. So the makru meant here, and, and I believe we'll get to this in the explanation, is that is makru, uh, a lot of times the salaf, they use makru not in the same way that the fuqaha use makru. That, you know, that they say that it's something disliked, but it's not haram. No, when you find makru mentioned in these, uh, ish, these uh, books of aqidah, in these early books of the salaf and the way they used it, they used it. To, uh, uh, meaning that is haram, muharram. And that's why Imam Ahmed said, and this is Dalil that shows us what he meant by that. He said, وَغَيْرْهَا مِنَ السُنَنْ مَكْرُوهُنْ مَنْهِيهُنْ عَنْهُ That it is hated or disliked and it is prohibited. Then the Imam said, لَا يُكُونْ صَاهِبُهُ وَإِنْ أَصَابَ بِكَلَامِهِ سُنَّةِ مِنْ أَحْلَ السُنَّةِ حَتَّى يَدْعَ جِدَالْ وَيُسَلَّمْ that is a powerful, powerful ibara. That statement right there is so powerful. And the reason I, I say that, because a lot of times, you know, we do feel, you know, I, you know, I feel about myself and, and, and sometimes I question other brothers when I see that they're quick to take people off the sunnah. But look at what the great Imam, Imam Ahmed said. You know, yes, we should be cautious. That's not for us to say, he, to bring someone, say, say that, you know, we authenticate that he's on the sunnah or she's on the sunnah or she's not on the sunnah. That's not for us, but we use the wabit. We use a criterion. We use a criterion. There's a criterion. It doesn't mean that absolutely no, there's no judgments in Islam. No, that's not the religion of Islam. Islam has many judgments, but they're based on criterion from the Quran and the Sunnah and the Madhab of the Salaf. That that's how we make our judgments. That yes, there's a time when someone is declared to be uh, an innovator. And there's a time when someone is declared to be uh, a disbeliever. That they've left the fold of Islam. They've apostated according to their aqidah, according to their actions, according to their statement. But there are criterion for that. And that's what's imperative for us to know. Imam Ahmed said, and he said, and the person who... Uh, you know, who, who debates about these issues, who debates about the Qur'an, who debates about the Ru'ya seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yawm al-qiyamah, has kalam that is unbefitting and kalam that's bid'i and, and so forth, and, and about the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who wants to debate about the qadr and his view about the qadr, which is going against kitab Allah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the salaf of this ummah, the one who's debating and arguing and coming up with new views about it and views that are in agreement with the jahmiya, with the mu'attala, with the mu'tazila and these other groups and sects. This person... That even if Imam Ahmed said this, he said, "La yukun sahibuhu wa in asaba bi kalamihi sun a sunnah." That the person who debates and argues, even if they get it correct, that their statement is in accordance with the sunnah. The fact that they're debating and arguing, they are not considered from ahl sunnah until they leave argument, argue, uh, arguing, debating, getting into controversy, and they accept the text. They, and they have taslim regarding the, 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 the nasus and the minhaj of the salaf of this ummah. This is imperative because so many people, they want to debate, they want to argue, they want to talk about this. They want to talk about things they don't even have knowledge about. They're not even students of knowledge. They're not nothing. But they want to argue and debate about things. Things they read on the internet. The internet can be a very dangerous tool if you don't use it correctly. They want to debate about things they heard from such and such lectures. They don't even know the background of this person they call sheikh. Everyone, everyone is sheikh. MashaAllah, he has a few ayats, he has a few ahadith, he's up in age, or he's young, wow, he graduated from here, he came from this country, he studied here, and he's a sheikh. That's not how the, the people before us judged who was a person of knowledge to take from. Naam, we may not be in ability to distinguish those things, but you gotta learn. You gotta learn who you can take your knowledge from. Make sure they're calling you a one criterion. They're calling to the Quran, they're calling to the Sunnah, and they're calling you to what the pious predecessors were upon, what, how the Sahaba understood the religion. That's what we got to learn. we got to atul al ilm That's the tariq al-jannah. So we can distinguish between falsehood and, 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 and khair. So regarding this, Sheikh Obaid mentioned two things. I'm just going to make the malachis really quickly of what the Sheikh said regarding these, this statement here. 
you know, and then we'll get into it. He said, then there are two things we, we take from this, from, uh, from this aspect of the text. Because then Imam Ahmed repeats uh, what, he, what he said here. He says, وَأَلَا يُخَاسَمَا أَحَدٍ وَلَا يُنَاظِرُهُ وَلَا يَتَعَلَّمَا جِدَالٍ فَإِنَّ الْكَلَامِ فِي الْقَدْرُ وَرَأْيَ وَالْقُرْآنِ وَغَيْرَهَا مِنَ السُنِ الْمَقْرُوهُ مَنْ هِيُ عَنْهُ لَا يُكُنْ صَاحِبُهُ وَإِنَّ صَابَ كَلَامَهُ كَلَامِهِ السُنَّةِ مِنْ أَهْلَ السُنَّةِ حَتَّى يَدَعَ جِدَالٍ وَيُسَلَّمْ وَيُؤْمِنْ بِالْأَثَارِ So Imam Ahmed basically repeated the same thing we just read already. So I don't know if this is uh, in the text, uh, if there's a, because this is a repetition here. But Sheikh Ubaid, half of the law ta'ala, he mentioned regarding this. He said in the explanation, he mentioned two main points. He said, even khalasata hadha shay'in. He said, then, therefore, there are two things that are uh, that summarize this. He said, ahadha taslim lil athar kama taqaddam. He said, the first thing is accepting the athar of the salaf. You know, what's, what's mentioned on the salaf of this ummah, the pious predecessors, the early scholars about these issues as he already mentioned and explained, believing in it, having iman in it, uh, and that iman, that it is the truth, and that it is an obligation to be on it and, and be away from the people of battle, uh, of falsehood regarding this, the people who have opinions and this and that and that. Oh, I think it means this. I think the hadith means this. You know, they have their opinions, but they're not going back to those to the mutaqaddameen, those people who preceded us. And the second thing that uh, Sheikh said, he said, "Athanian, la tu khasam ahadin min ahl al ahwa aktafi bi shara sunnah wa bayaniha." A beautiful thing. The Sheikh said here. He said, and the second thing is, is that not to debate anyone, you know, get into controversy with anyone from the people of desires. It's sufficient. The explanation of the sunnah. And making clear and, and clarifying it. Yakfik. That's sufficient. And that is a beautiful qaida right there. Because so, sometimes you can't help it. May Allah forgive us, but you, you get caught up. And someone from Ahl Bidda, they're saying something. Sometimes you want to emr bi maruf and nahi namunkar. You command the good and forbid the evil. And that's a good thing. But you have to be careful that you stay within the hud of the shara. That you don't go beyond the bounds and you don't get your emotions caught up and it becomes a debate and an argument. And then you speak without knowledge. You have to really uh, it's capturing and harnessing your desires and harnessing your tongue when you deal with Ahl Bidah because they want to debate. The Takfiris want to come up and they want to challenge you. Well, Sheikh bin Laden said this. Sheikh Abu Qatada said this. Sheikh Faisal said that. billah. Sheikh, you know, it's sufficient for me what these mountains of knowledge said about these issues. And they're bringing us back to the Nasus and they're bringing us back to the Salaf of this Ummah. Sheikh Salim bin Fuzayn bin Baz uh, bin Uthameen, Sheikh uh, Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi, all these great Imams, Sheikh al Albani, it's sufficient. And way before them, Sheikh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah and Sheikh al Islam ibn al Qayyum, and going back to the Salaf of this Ummah, they've already spoken about these issues. But you want to debate? You want to tell me what this guy says? Abu Qatada, who is he? Bin Laden, who is he? Uh, uh, Faisal, who is he? Wa'iyadin bin Lam and Dalika. But instead, restrain, don't, don't get in, in, involved with debate with Ahl Bidah. Avoid it as much as possible. Another benefit of Thalith, the Sheikh mentioned a third point. He said, He said that this was not from the guidance of the Salaf of this Ummah to get into debate and argue with these people. That that is against to have to set up debates and arguments and this and this is this. I remember, I recall a true event here in Seattle. Uh, one tekfiri, uh, the two tekfiris, they came up. And there's some of the rules of tekfir in Seattle that I know of. And they came in. And so I began to discuss with my companions about some issue. And I raised my voice because I wanted them to hear. Because I wanted them to know. I was making Atlan that please don't even come over here. They came over, and I recall them, one of them sitting, and he said, Brother Khalid, I'm ready to debate you. We're ready to debate you any time. And I said, Wa'ayyadim billah. How can I debate the dogs of the hellfire? How can I debate the dogs of the hellfire? That the Prophet wasallam said, Al-Khawarij kilab al nar The Khawarij are the kilab al nar They're the dogs of the hellfire. So how? It's not from the Hadi of the Salaf. And so those are some of just some of the benefits that we gain and we'll continue on and we'll look uh, a little bit more in depth 
uh, in our next lesson from this, and then we'll continue on in our treaties. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.